we've had more rain, and that means more relief from the fire ban. And as a result, I can get out and do more testing of my wood stoves. This time, it's the Pyrolino from Greece. If you're interested in hearing more about this interesting design, keep watching. So I've had this stove in my possession for quite some time and now I'm ready to give you a review. So this stove was sent to me by the good people at Pyrolino for testing and review. And I had reached out to them after I became aware of the stove because it was an interesting design that appeared to combine both a wood gas stove and a rocket stove. And that's pretty much the holy grail of stove design if you can do it right. So I've had it in my possession, I've done a lot of testing with it right through the last summer and winter and now into this summer and I've got some comments on it. What I'm going to do now is take it down to the ground, disassemble it, show you its parts, talk a little bit about its specifications, put it back together and we'll have a fire in it. So when the stove arrived it did come in a cardboard box and then inside of this lightweight stuff sack. It's a fair, it's a, it's a lightweight, I don't know how to describe it. It is synthetic, but it's very papery. It's not something I'll keep this in for long term, but for at least now it provides a good way of keeping everything together and keeping my bag from my pack sack from getting dirty. So let's take it out of the stuff sack and I'm going to do some setting up and as I do I'll talk a little bit about the physical statistics of the stove before we get it set up for a fire. So right off the top you can see I've collapsed the two parts down into one so the chimney portion does fit inside down inside of the stove. But we're going to start with the stove upside down on the base because on the base there are three swing out legs that tighten down with wing nuts to provide a very wide and stable base for the stove. I like that they swing out of the way so that uh, during transport and everything and they're not in the way. We'll turn that up and you can see it does provide a very wide stable base. Next I'll take the chimney out. We'll set that aside for a second because down inside are the crossbars and one other piece that I'll show you now and hopefully I'll be able to show you again in a minute. It's a little grate that helps keep the fuel, whether it's wood pellets or wood or any other organic matter, off of the burn plate on the floor. And the reason that's important is because this stove does come with an adjustment. I think it's probably the only wood stove that I'm aware of, at least in my possession, that has an airflow adjustment right here. And I'll bring that up close so you can see how that works. Hopefully you'll be able to see down inside. But by moving that lever back and forth, I open and close over a number of holes in the very bottom of the stove that will regulate how much air can flow up through the stove. And it does make quite a bit of a difference in how quickly the stove will consume its fuel and how much heat it will consume. So what you do with this heavy, and it is heavy, great metal, is you put that down inside so it sits over that little, the adjustable burn plate. Now, you have two ways of using this stove. If you want to use it strictly as a wood gas stove, then you would just set it up without the chimney. Heavy duty crossbars would sit on top like that, and you would have your fire, whatever fuel you're using, and your pot on top. I think I will show you just the inside top of the wood stove so you can see the secondary ports. Again, hopefully that's showing up in there, but they're slots rather than little holes and they are canted or slanted to one side. It's just a different design. It's, I don't know if it necessarily works better than other wood gas stoves, but uh, it may provide some turbulence. I think that was the concept is the air coming out would provide a little turbulence and create more of a vortex of fire. Okay, the other way of using the stove is to load it with fuel get the fire going in the base and then take this chimney and place it on top like that. Now it does fit down rather snug and then those same crossbars would go on top of the chimney. I know that's not all quite visible to you but it will be when I get it set up in the fire pit. The chimney is interesting in that if you look in the base you'll see that there are slots at almost like a fan wings at angles and they do create quite a vortex. I'll give you a look down from the top. They do create quite a vor vortex of flame coming up through the chimney. Now, what's the benefit? Well, if it works right, this type of a design will begin with a clean burn because of the wood gas, the pyrolysis that's taking place and no, no smoke coming even out of this portion of the stove.
But once you add the chimney, you're doing, you're drawing more air through at a much rapid rate and it's mixing with oxygen through here again. So any wood gas that just didn't get burnt off is going to consumed, get consumed in the flame. And when this is going, it just roars like a rocket stove, especially with wood. Not so much with wood pellets, but especially with wood. It just roars. When you place this on top and you use the crossbars, the claim by the company is that it produces no smoke whatsoever, especially with wood pellets. That I can start out with a brand new stainless steel pot or pan or something from my kitchen and it will be just as clean when I'm finished. No soot on it whatsoever. And uh, I'm not going to do that today because the only part I brought out is heavily covered in soot and creosote. But I have done it home and I can attest to their claim. When this combination is in use, there is absolutely no soot coming out onto the pots at the top at all. It is actually quite amazing. There are some downsides to that, but I'll get to that in a few minutes when we go over the pros and cons. Okay, let's talk a little bit about statistics and then we'll get to building a fire. So overall, all these components together weigh in at 3.75 pounds or 1,700 grams. That is heavy for a backpacking stove. So reality is this is not a backpacking stove, not unless you have some type of conveyance. If you're, if you have a canoe or in the winter, if I'm carrying, dragging things in the woods with a pulk or something that I feel I need, or I, I'll benefit from the heavier stove and the performance that it brings with it. I'm not going to be carrying this in my backpack too often, but car camping, I think it's a legitimate thing to take that way. Or if you're only going a short distance or you're going to be leaving it at a site there where you'll uh, won't have to carry it back and forth. 3.75 pounds is quite heavy, but that is mostly because the heavy duty nature of all the metal in this stove. Okay, height collapse with the chimney is down inside, the legs are swung out of the way. The height comes in at 9.8 inches or 25 centimeters. When it's assembled with the chimney on top, and the crossbars on top, it comes in at 17.7 inches or 45 centimeters. The diameter at its widest is 5.1 inches across here. Now it is a little bit uh, more narrow once you get into the feet burn chamber area. And the burn chamber is only about 10 inches deep. Now, and of course, I'm going to be putting all of the specifications in the show notes below for, for you to look at afterwards. Now the company does claim that you can get a maximum of one and a half hour burn out of this. Um, that is, I think, in my opinion, quite optimistic. And I'll tell you how I think they arrived at that. But realistically, even though you can do that, it's not the most effective way to use this stove. So what are some of the pros and cons on this before we get to putting a fire in it? Well, obviously the legs on the bottom. Look at that. I mean, that's I, you know, normally with a tall, narrow stove like this, you're going to worry about knocking it over because it is going to be standing at quite a height. The center of gravity you expect to be way up here. Well, two things. The center of gravity is actually going to be low because the heaviest portion of the stove is at the bottom. But in addition, those wide, uh, those legs swing out so far that it really makes for a stable base. Those legs also raise the stove off of the ground a fair amount, so probably an inch and a half. Yeah, close to two inches, probably somewhere between an inch and a half and two inches, which means even though there is an ash pan in the bottom of this, heat still does radiate through. And, you know, if you wanted to use this on the ground, I would recommend still uh, any wood stove for that matter, putting it on rock or mineral soil or some other fireproof base. But I would feel perfectly safe in putting this on top of a picnic table in a park somewhere and not worry about heat scorching and making a mess of the table underneath. So that's one of the pros. The heavy due to construction. I worry, no, there's just no worry whatsoever that you can damage this. It's just too heavy. Now, that weight is a con at the same time, but it is, for the, in this case, a, a very heavy duty stove. As I mentioned already, one of the other pros is no smoke, no soot whatsoever, especially when using pellets and the chimney in combination. So what are some of the cons with this stove? Well, 
Um, it is considered a multi-fuel stove, but organic matter only. It's not going to work with alcohol. I cannot figure out any way to use a Trangia or any other type of alcohol stove or an Esbe tablets or anything like that, or even charcoal. I don't. I tried with charcoal and I didn't get very good results with it either. So it is meant for wood, wood pellets. You could use other organic materials like pine cones and the like, but that's about all. Now that's not a bad thing, really. It's just that it's not as versatile as some stoves may be. Okay, it can go through wood quite quickly and that is especially true when I put the chimney on top. So if I was to stack this full of wood and I can get a fair amount in there with a 10 inch deep probably four and a half inch wide uh, burn chamber I can get a lot of wood in there but once you put that wood in you can use it as is as a wood gas stove or I can put the chimney on. If I put the wood the chimney on the draw is such that it will consume the wood at a very high rate. Now yes I can control that to a degree with this damper on the bottom here but the the, the real downside of that is is once this chimney goes on that's it you're not getting it off. In fact putting it on sometimes I found to be a bit of a challenge. I would only do it with, wood with leather gloves on. Even better if you had some welding gloves or something because, you know, if you're quick and you get it on and you get it set, you're not going to burn yourself, but you're not going to get it off again afterwards because it does get extremely hot. So once that you've loaded the stove up, you put the chimney on, uh, that's it until you finish the burn. You're not reloading at least during the burn. Ah, uh, you know, with wood, yes, that was an issue. With wood pellets, not so much, because with wood pellets, and I do have some testing that I'll, I'll refer to in a minute, um, they, they recommend that you only put, uh, put enough wood pellets for two-thirds the total capacity, and that comes to about two and a half cups, and that's what I brought with me today, is wood pellets. Um, I'll give you some of the stats on the testing I did with wood and wood pellets in a second but what else is uh, a bit of a con with this well this is the reason why i waited so long to bring this stove to you is because even though i got it late last summer into the fall as i tested it over the winter at home in my backyard i found that uh, especially with the chimney on there was a lot of heat being lost it took a long time to bring water to a boil with the chimney on during the colder weather. Now, if I just used the wood gas stove, it was fine. It was like any other wood gas stove, and we'll talk about that in a second. But once the chimney was at, it was a clean burn, smokeless, no doubt about it, but it was not a lot of heat. And the reason for that, I believe, is because like a lot of rocket stoves, heat radiates out the chimney unless it is insulated. You know, the good rocket stoves have a heavy insulation built around them, quite often cement or other, other insulated materials. When you try to create a portable rocket stove, you don't carry that insulation around and you, as a result, you're gonna lose a lot of heat out through the sides. Now, I did try something, it worked, or at least it helped. It wasn't the, the total answer and that was I had some carbon felt at home so I wrapped a piece of the carbon felt around held it on with some wires and it increased the heat production of the heat coming out of the top of the stove dramatically even so I don't recommend using the chimney during the winter at least outdoors in the freezing cold temperatures I spoke to the company about it and I asked them if they had done cold weather testing but of course pyrolino is from Greece they don't get the cold temperatures we do in Canada so they te they did it we respond that yes we've done cold uh, cold weather temperatures down to zero degrees celsius or 32 degrees fahrenheit because it just doesn't get colder than that there so that's as cold as they were able to test it so that was news to them that i could not get a good cold weather use out of the chimney again the wood gas portion of the stove worked just fine even in those colder temperatures and you do reduce the weight of the stove if you leave decide to leave the chimney at home um, the rest of the stove is only going to come in at 2.13 pounds, so you're saving, you know, well over a pound, almost a pound and a half, actually more than a pound and a half off the weight by leaving this portion of the stove at home. Okay, uh, one of the other cons that I found, and it's, it, it's a bit inconsistent, is this damper. Right now you can see it's so loose, it, you, you'd be hard to imagine that it might actually get stuck. But I think with the expansion and if any coals at all fall through that grate that I showed you that I put down inside, then I find that the damper does get jammed. And 
you know you just can't handle the stove to try and force it or tap at it or anything else so if it becomes jammed then you've lost some of your heat regulation or airflow regulation so it's a bit of a con now it didn't happen every time I used it it didn't happen with wood interestingly it happened more when using wood pellets and again I think it was some of the coals were falling through and getting jammed up all right, because of that heavy-duty construction, once this heats up, it stays hot for a long time. Now, that's a, that can be a pro in that you're not going to lose your heat, your cooking time is extended, and it's going to keep the fuel burning more efficiently once the stove heats up. But if you're trying to pack up and get on the road, uh, this does take quite a while to cool off. So that's, that's also true. So... I did do some testing. I also did some comparisons work or with some other stoves because I looked at this and I said, does this have advantages of over other wood gas stoves like either the Solo Titan or the Lexata stove? And uh, well, it, I'll leave that up to you to judge. It is a highly effective wood gas stove, works very well. It has about the same internal capacity. This may hold a little bit more pellets than either the Solo Titan or the Lexata wood gas stove, but the weight is again quite considerable. The Solo Titan comes in at one pound even or 464 grams, wherein the Lexata comes in at 14 ounces or 399 grams. So this is every, it's at least twice as heavy as either of those stoves, actually a bit more than twice as heavy than either of those stoves. So that's again something you'd have to judge. Once again, if you don't have either of those stoves and weight is not a huge issue for you, this is going to be the more heavy duty of all the designs and a bit more versatile when you, if you decide to use that chimney. Okay, last thing I'm going to talk about before we put it in the fire pit and get a fire going on so I can heat up some lunch is the testing that I've done. And again, I'll put this in the show notes below. But I did some testing just recently and I did it in warm temperatures at home. So 25 degrees Celsius during one test, 21 degrees Celsius during the other test. Very close. Wind was ne negligible. When I used wood pellets, I used two cups or 500 millimeters of wood pellets. I left the draft vent wide open. It took a few minutes to get it started up, but all wood gas stoves did. But once it was going, without the use of the chimney, I got a seven minute boil time with two cups of water and, uh, and inside of a 48 ounce uh, Pathfinder pot. Now that's pretty impressive all by itself. It did smoke a little bit. Now my pot was already dirty, so I couldn't tell just how much soot it added to it, but not a whole lot because wood gas stoves are pretty clean. So then I put the chimney on because I had lots of heat left in the stove. I put the chimney on and the boil time increased to eight minutes and 30 seconds for the same amount of water in the same pot. Um, you know, it, 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 the, there was no smoke when the chimney added and there was no... Uh, no soot either. Actually, I, no, it wasn't the same pot. I, I got a clean pot because, again, I wanted to test that out. I got a brand new pot that I have that I reserve strictly for doing tests with alcohol stoves, stainless steel pot of the same capacity, and there was no soot on the kettle at all when the chimney was added. So that, that does have some benefits if that's what you're looking for. There is some real truth to the fact that it completely removes all soot. I also got 35 minutes of steady heat with this stove, but remember again, I did have the draft vent full open. And I mentioned earlier that the company claims an hour and a half burn time, and I suspect that's when they're maximizing the amount of pellets in it, and they light it, and they close the vent down. Now, it doesn't close off all air, it just slow, close off some of it. So if you slow the stove down as much as possible and have the maximum amount of fuel on, in it maybe you could get an hour and a half in warm temperatures uh, I didn't test that honestly I didn't test that and I don't know that I would ever use it like that because it just I don't think it's going to produce enough heat for simmering maybe but bring water to a boil which is a standard for me especially if I'm out in the woods I want to know that I can bring water to a hard rolling boil uh, I didn't do that okay the other test I did was with a full load of wood so I Put in enough wood that it came to just below those vents that are in the top of the stove, the secondary ports. And uh, I left the, again, I left the draft vent full open. It took about two minutes, like any other wood gas, you just create a little fire on top of the uh, fuel. Um, that was impressive, okay? It five minutes, 23 seconds to bring the two cups of, of cold water to a boil. Um, that was much better than wood pellets. Um, I still had heat left in it, so I put the chimney on, and when I did that, 
incredible. They, like I mentioned, it worked like a true rocket stove. The noise was incredible. The, the roaring that was coming up through it. The heat was incredible. I got a two minute, 15 second boil time when the chimney was on. So very little, very little, actually no smoke and very quick. Uh, again, it, no smoke, very quick, but the burn time was down to 14 minutes, 30 seconds. That's all I got from a full load of wood. It's just under 15 minutes. And like I mentioned before, once that chimney goes on, that's it. You're not going to refuel until the stove cools down enough for you to be able to handle the, uh, the chimney. And it does get quite tight again with expansion. All right. I said I'd put all that information in the show notes below. Let's get to making a fire because I'm hungry and I want to heat some water. All right, so I have the stove set up in a fire pit and hopefully I've got the camera aimed so you can see what's happening. And uh, I'll, if I have to, I'll move the camera around so you can get a better shot at it. What I'm going to be doing is using a bag full of wood pellets. These are herd wood pellets and I've got a little over a cup and a half. I was just quite, kind of generous when I measured, so a little over a cup and a half here. I am going to load it up. Now that's coming, and I'll show you that. That's coming well below the feed ports, probably an inch and a half below the feed ports. So I could have gone three cups quite easily. I'm setting the vent, the damper control, over to the high side or the plus side just to give it maximum airflow to get the stove going and uh, maximum heat. I will attempt during this test to close it over. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Now, to light the wood pellets up, uh, a homemade fire starter. These are one of these makeup pads dipped in candle wax, melted candle wax and I'll break this actually I think I'll probably break it in half and see if I can't bury it down it always takes a few minutes to get wood pellets going before you actually get real pyrolysis and gasification so let's see what I can do here very little wind today which is nice but occasionally for whatever reason it does gust up all right that's catching on as I mentioned, it's going to take a few minutes for this to, I didn't put it out, no, I didn't, to catch on. Uh, I think rather than wait or let the camera roll until it, it, the wood pellets are well engaged and we start to get some pyrolysis, what I'll do is I'll just bring you back in a few minutes so you can get a good look at the pyrolysis and gasification taking place down inside the wood stove. So, bring you back in a minute. Okay, I... Uh, went ahead and put my lunch on because I was getting hungry. If you're interested, by the way, the meal that I have inside of my 12 centimeter pot is one of the new uh, cook in the pouch meals from Uncle Ben's. This one is beans with bacon. I haven't tried it before, but I'm looking forward to it. It's just something new in our grocery stores. Maybe you already have them. If you haven't tried it, get out and have a look and see if you can find it because how easy is that? Cooking, just heating it right in the bag. It's, all, it's safe to do it this way, right in the pot, in the water. My water's boiling. Okay, I'm going to put some gloves on, take my pot off. I'm going to show you what's taking place inside of the pyrolino in terms of uh, wood gasification. Uh, put that back. My lunch is not quite ready to eat, so I'll, I'll be putting it back on top in a second. But we do have full gasification taking place inside. Let me see if I can lift the camera up, show you what's going on down there. All the jets are firing nicely. I don't know if I really do see a bit of a vortex, but at least they're working the way they're supposed to. And, uh, you know, look how clean that is. Wood pellets do provide a very clean fire most of the time anyway, so I'm, I'm not too surprised by that. So let's just try the damper. Yep, okay, no problem using the damper. I don't think I'd do this without gloves on or a stick, but uh, it's working fine. Didn't get stuck this time. That's good to see. I'm using a pair of pliers to take the crossbars off. Both the only way I'm going to be able to do it. And now I'm going to put the chimney on. And you'll see what I mean. Like, you want to be quick, but you want to be accurate with doing this as well. And it doesn't always get on straight. And that's not totally straight, but that's as straight as it's going to get. Now, put the crossbars back on. I can hear the roaring coming up the chimney, even from the wood gas. I think I'll leave the crossbars off for a second so I can show you what's taking place down inside there. 
So now you can see a vortex. Look at that. That's, that's actually a pretty sight to stove people. A nice vortex of flame. Some very, very clean heat coming up of that chimney. And I don't think you're picking up the roaring noise. It's not as loud as it is with wood, but it's still quite loud. So that's working just the way you would like it to. Now let me put the crossbars back on. That little bit of smoke you see is probably the oil that was on the outside of this after I cleaned it the last time. I do like to oil my stoves after I clean off any loose soot. And let me put my meal back on top. Now, you can probably see, let me get back behind the camera and see. Yeah, this is a tall arrangement, right? So let me back the camera up a little bit. Look how tall this is. If it wasn't for those three legs, I would be scared to death to use this for fear of the thing tipping over. But it's working just fine the way it is because of those three legs. Not a bit of smoke. All I'm seeing is steam coming out of the water. This is exactly the way it was intended to work. Nice, clean, no smoke, even heat, very controllable, and that's going to last me at least 35 minutes. So it did take a while for the pellets to become engaged, but once they did, you know, it's, it's working just the way you would like it. So what I'm going to do now is wait till my lunch is ready, eat that. It'll take quite a bit of time before that stove is cool enough for me to touch again, and then we'll close up with a few thoughts. So what are my thoughts on the Pyrolino wood stove? It's a part wood gas, part rocket stove. Well, at close to four pounds, this is not a backpacking stove, but it would make a great car camping stove. It would make a great stove if you have a conveyance that you can carry the extra weight with. It has the capacity for a lot of cooking. So if you had a number of people and you wanted to have a lot of heat over a prolonged period of time, this is definitely the stove or definitely a good contender for, what, for that purpose. It does have some downsides, not the weight aside, you know, the chimney does provide you an extra clean burn, but it does go through the fuel faster, and once the chimney goes on, it's on. Uh, I did use a pair of pliers to get it off as it cooled down, uh, just to help it cool down a little quicker. So, yeah, I guess you could probably work to get it off, but... Uh, you know, what, to what advantage? I guess you could probably refuel it a little bit at that point when the coals are down a long ways. But, uh, you know, 35 minutes on wide open damper with wood pellets, that's, that's not bad at all. I know it's comparable to what I get with my Solo Titan or my Lixata wood gas stoves. So what I'm going to do with this stove now is we are hoping to get away, my wife and I, to Kujabaquak National Park again this year. That may not happen, and the only reason is because of COVID. So I think that's changed a lot of people's lives this year. But what I will do is if I get it out to a campground where I can do more testing, uh, we'll cook some meals, whole meals on top of this stove for my wife and my wife Gina and I. Otherwise, I'll take it out once in a while in the backyard. I'll take it to parks. I think it's an ideal thing to take to parks or to a beach or somewhere where you can transport it in a car, not in my backpack. It was heavy carrying it out today. The quality of this stove is spot on. It's well made, well put together, the quality assurance. It's heavy duty construction. I have no fear about this lasting over the long term. It won't rust out. All heavy gauge stainless steel. Well designed with the exceptions that I mentioned about getting the <laughs> chimney on and off once it's, once it's going. Other than that, I think it's a great stove. If you have any questions or any comments on this stove, please put them in the comments section below. And as I mentioned earlier, I will put all the information where the stove can be obtained as well as my testing results and the technical specs on the stove again in the show notes or the video description below. But until I get out with another video, get out and explore yourself and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.